Hello everyone, this is Sukruti Joshi from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology Ahmedabad. I am going to take the video lecture series on chemistry. The subject code for chemistry is 311001. In this particular session of this subject, we are going to start our chapter number 3 which is metals, alloys and corrosion. In this particular chapter, we will take a look on what are metals, what are actually the properties of metals, what are the alloys, which are the types of alloys that can be present and what is corrosion and how we can denote or prevent the corrosion. So let's begin with our chapter number 4, chapter number 3 that is metals, alloys and corrosion. The elements which have properties like malleability, ductility, luster and hardness are known as metals. Again, I am saying that the elements, specific elements has specific properties as we all know that. So as here, when any kind of element has the properties of shine, of lusterness, malleability and ductility, they are referred as metals. Now all the elements that form the positive ions by losing electrons during chemical reactions are called metals. Thus metals are basically the electropositive elements. We have to understood that they are the electropositive elements. They are characterized by their bright luster and their hardness. Generally they are hard in their nature. Now Let's go to the next topic which is physical properties of the matter. We will take a look at the properties of the matter one by one. As we move ahead we will see the examples of it also. So the first one, the first property is state. Metals are generally solid at room temperature with the exceptions of mercury because mercury is liquid at room temperature. Now second property is lusterness. So here the metals have the quality of reflecting the light from their surface and can be polished. For an example gold, silver and copper. We can polish them, we can shine them. This is the best property of the matter. In any form or in any size, they shows us lusterness. Next property is malleability. So what do you understand by it? So the metals has the ability to withstand the hammering and can be made into thin sheets which are known as foils. This property of converting itself in foils is known as malleability. Next is ductility. So metals can be drawn into wires. They can be converted into wires. For example, 100 gram of silver can be drawn into a wire or thin wire about 200 meters long. So this ability of the metal to convert it into a thin wire is known as ductility. Now next one is hardness. As we all know that metals are hard in nature. Again some exceptions are there. For an example mercury which is liquid in nature it is not that much hard as we know. Okay. 
Our next physical property of the metal that we will take a look here is valency. Valency we all know that, that valency is the number of electrons which are actually present in their outermost shell. It is the ability or it shows the number of valence electrons. Okay, so metals typically have 1, 2, 3 electrons in their outermost shell of their atoms. Next property is conduction. Silver and copper are the two base conductors of heat and electricity. Lead is the poorest conductor of heat. These are the examples of it. Now, next one if you move ahead which is density. Metals generally have high density are very heavy in nature. But here also iridium and osmium have the highest densities whereas lithium has the lowest density. Now let's move to the next property which is melting and boiling points. Metals have high melting and boiling points. For an example tungsten has the highest melting point and boiling point where mercury has the lowest boiling point or melting point. Okay. Now, when we use direct metals, we came across certain things, certain disadvantages. Like when we use only and only aluminum, it will get melt at higher temperatures. Likewise, when we use only and only iron, then rusting or corrosion is a bigger problem. So here, what we need to do that as the industrialization moves along with it metals are actually combined with each other in order to form a another compound a mixture that compound that mixture here is known as alloy so alloys can be defined as the mixture of two or more metal elements in their molten form. Make sure they has to be in molten form and not in solid form. If they are in molten form then and then only they can be mixed together or else they will not mixed up together. Now let's see the classification of alloys it, it or basically we can do the classification of alloys based upon two different criteria first criteria is based on the presence or absence of iron and second one is based on the principal metals that are present in the alloy the highest percentage of metal which is present in alloy. So, based upon the presence or absence of iron, we can divide our alloys or we can classify our alloys in two types. Number one, ferrous alloys and number two, non-ferrous alloys. Second one or second criteria is based on principal metals in alloy. Here, based upon it, we can divide it into three main types. Number one, alloys of magnesium. Number two, alloys of lead. And number three, alloys of nickel. We can convert them in this manner or we can divide them in this manner. Okay? Now, Let's see them one by one. First one is ferrous alloys. Here, ferrous alloys are the alloys which contain iron as the major component and it is mixed with some other metal or some other non-metal. Then it is known as 
ferrous alloy. So, iron is the main component here. Now, for an example, iron along with carbon forms the alloys with other metals like nickel, chromium or both. It is possible that it can contain two components or it can contain more than two components together. Components means metals or non-metals here. Okay? So based upon the ferrous or composition of the ferrous alloys, they can be of again two types. Three component ferrous alloys which contain ferrous, carbon and nickel. While another one which is four component ferrous alloys which contain ferrous, carbon, chromium and nickel. It is possible that we can add certain different different kinds of metals with each other in order to get the particular alloy. Right? So in the image you can observe I have shown you a nickel. That means ferrous will be converted or will be attached in a molten form with nickel in order to convert itself into another usable alloy. Nowadays alloys are widely used. Everywhere it is used for making of the bench, chairs, tables, bottles. We use different different kinds of alloys only. Because they give us more property than that of the normal one. So we can observe that ferrous alloy is actually used widely. Certain advantages are also there and disadvantages are also there. Like when we use ferrous in higher amount, then corrosion is the biggest problem because they get corroded easily. So we have to coat them. Along with it, when we use another metals like nickel or like carbon, non-metal or chromium, then their price may go up. But their properties will came down, their properties will also be enhanced. So we have to see that which kind of application we have to utilize so that we can decide that which kind of alloy can be used. Every alloy has its own application. Some alloys has lightweight, some alloys has better durability, some has better corrosion protection, some has all the properties together but their price may be higher. In this manner we can see that alloys are actually more and more useful than that of the pure metals because as the industrialization moves or as the growth occurs along with it their own customization occurs. So alloys are made and used in various ways. Automobile industries, whether we are talking about mechanical industries, whether we are talking about chemical industries, to become or to make storage tanks, to make certain household furnitures, we use alloys and alloys only. They are widely used in various kinds of applications also. A huge industries contain a huge shades. So they make alloy in such a manner that they can hold together various weather conditions. It can be used in summer, it can be used in monsoon, it can be used in winter also. So this is it for our ferrous alloys. Next we will see in our next session. Thank you so much.